tornadoes can exert powerful forces. In the problem at hand, we are asked to consider a tornado that has driven a drinking straw into a tree trunk. The picture before you comes from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website, and it shows a 33 RPM record that was embedded in a telephone pole as a result of a tornado. The image before you puts tornadoes in context in terms of wind speeds and classification. The F scale, or the Fujita scale, ranks tornadoes in terms of their severity. We normally hear about tornadoes somewhere between F1 and F5, although the scale does go beyond that. An F5 tornado can inflict incredible damage. It's associated with wind speeds of 250 to 300 miles per hour, or in metric that's 125 to say 150 meters per second. Let's keep that in mind as we consider the problem at hand. Welcome, I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we're asked about a straw that's being driven by tornado strength winds into a tree trunk. So we're talking about a change in energy. The straw is moving very fast and then it is stopped. We're also talking about it being stopped by the tree over a certain distance, force over a distance, that equals work. So we're going to be using the work energy theorem. And specifically, we're asked to find the impact speed. And we're given a few things. We're given the force that the tree exerts on the straw. We're given the mass of the straw. And we're given the distance that the straw travels into the trunk. As we develop this problem, we're going to start with a drawing as usual. Now there are two states that we're considering here. One is when the straw is just about to impact the tree trunk, and the other is after it has been driven into the trunk some distance. For compactness, I'm going to draw them on the same tree trunk, but we'll label them carefully so we can distinguish. So right before, we have the straw traveling toward the tree trunk with an initial velocity, but we don't know what that is. That's, when, that's what we're trying to find. Afterward, so this is before. Afterward, the straw has been driven into the tree trunk 4.5 centimeters. We don't know how long the whole straw is, so presumably some of it is still protruding from the tree trunk. We know that it stopped at this point, so we can indicate that by saying that our final velocity is 0 meters per second. What else is going on? What causes the straw to slow down? Well, the tree trunk exerts a force that is opposing the movement of the straw. We're told that that force is equal to 75 newtons. We're told that the mass of the straw is 0.55 grams. Now we're going to need that in kilograms because our calculations should be done in MKS units. So let's convert that now. A gram divided by a thousand is kilograms, so that gives us 0 0.00055 kilograms. You could use uh, scientific notation if you like, but I'm going to leave it this way for this problem. We're also given D, the distance that the straw is driven into the tree in centimeters. Converting that to meters by dividing by a hundred, we have 0 0.045 meters. As we make a plan to solve this problem, we've identified that we're going to use the work energy theorem. So we're going to go ahead and recall that symbolically. So the net work appears on the left-hand side of this, of this theorem, and we need to express that work in terms of the force and distance that are in this problem. Then we'll work with the right hand, or the energy side of the theorem, to express the change in kinetic energy in terms of the mass of the straw in this case, and the initial and final velocities. Then what we're interested in is the initial velocity, so we need to solve this symbolically.
for that initial velocity. Now we're ready to substitute actual values and we'll compute that initial velocity. Before we report our answer, we will consider how many significant figures to use at that point. We'll be retaining uh, many more digits up to that point than we'll use in our final answer. All right, let's evaluate this problem by following the plan we just made. The work energy theorem states that the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, what's doing the work here? The force of the tree against the straw, yet the straw moves over a distance. So the network is expressed as the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. And that is a scalar operation, or you end up with a scalar value. So to express that, as you may have learned, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them, which we'll call theta, is how we can compute that. And that's still equal to the change in kinetic energy. Theta, what theta? Let's take a look. Theta is the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement. In our drawing, if we choose uh, to the right and up to be positive, the straw is traveling in a positive horizontal direction. The force is traveling in a negative horizontal direction. The angle between them, therefore, is 180. So let's make a note. Theta is 180. That means cosine theta is negative 1. We can rewrite the left-hand side of this equation then as negative for the negative 1 times the force times the distance that the straw goes into the tree. Now we're ready to work with this right-hand side of the equation and express the change in kinetic energy in terms of values in this problem, in terms of quantities. So the change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy, one-half times the mass times the final velocity squared, minus the initial kinetic energy. Now we already noted as we were considering the problem that the final kinetic or the final velocity is zero. So if we know, note here that the final velocity is zero, this whole term goes to zero. So our expression can now be simplified as negative force times that distance equals negative one half the mass times the initial velocity squared. As a final step of simplifying symbolically, let's uh, multiply both sides by negative 1 so we don't have to track those negative coefficients anymore. So we'll have force times distance equals 1 half the mass times the initial velocity squared. Now, we have a lot of symbols here. Let's remind ourselves that this one, the initial velocity, is the one we're trying to compute. We have values for the others at the appropriate time. Let's solve for that initial velocity. If we multiply both sides by 2, we'll have 2 times the force times the distance. We'll divide through by the mass. That will leave us with the square of the initial velocity on the right-hand side. Solving for the initial velocity, 2 times the force times the distance over mass and the square root of that quantity. Now we're ready to substitute values and get an actual number associated with that initial impact velocity. So we have 2 times our force, which was 75 newtons, times the displacement, which was 0 0.045 meters. And then we have that divided by the mass, 0, 0, 0, 0.0055 kilograms, and all of this to the square root, which I will raise it to the 1 half power, which is equivalent to taking the square root. All right, when we compute this, we get that V naught is equal to the square root of 12,272.73 meters squared per second squared, and all of that, the square root, which I've written again as the, to the 1 half power. Now, how did I get meters squared per second squared? Let's do a little aside with these units to verify that that was the correct thing. We don't want to assume that we end up with the correct units. Let's just do this uh, with units only, no numbers. We have newtons for the, math, for the force times meters for the distance that the straw went into the tree 
divided by kilograms, which was the mass of the straw. That doesn't look very simplifiable, does it? But recall that a newton is equal to a kilogram times meters per second squared. If we multiply that now by mass over kilograms, now we see some simplification is possible. Kilograms cancels out and we are left with meters squared per second squared, which is what I have inside of that expression. So once we take the square root, our answer, which is 110.78 meters per second, will have units of meters per second as we would expect. So reporting this to the right significant digits, which, checking back with our initial given values, is 2. We can report that the straw impacts the tree at 110 meters per second. Now that's our answer. Before we walk away, we want to take a moment to assess our answer. The first thing to do is to check units, and we just spent several moments verifying that the values we substituted into our calculation for the initial speed or initial velocity uh, do come out to the units of meters per second that we would expect. So this helps us be sure that we didn't leave out a term and that we didn't forget to convert any given value that was not originally in MKS units. Secondly, we can use our answer to verify the work energy theorem. Or maybe you could say it the other way around. It is a bit of a tautology, but it could help catch calculation errors that may have been made. If we go back to our expression, our simplified expression for the work energy theorem in uh, step three, we have the force times the distance should be equal to one half the mass times that initial velocity squared that we just computed. So if we have a force of 75 newtons times the distance, 0.045 meters, that should equal one half the mass times 110. We need to use the uh, longer, more significant digits here if we want to come out correct. And when we compute that, we get an answer of 3.375 is equal to 3.375. And we end up with uh, Newton meters on both sides. This time I'm going to save the few minutes of going through the unit analysis with you, but it would be similar to what we did earlier in the problem. We come out with units of Newtons times meters on both sides, which I will take a moment to, to remind you is equal to joules, the unit of energy. So we have work, Newton meters, equaling the same as a unit of joules. Finally, for our last check, we want to think about the speed in terms of tornadoes. If we go back to the Fujita scale that you were shown at the beginning of the problem, we see that this is a high F4 or a low F5 level of tornado with wind speeds of 110 meters per second. And so that makes sense as well. Had our answer come out to be an F1 tornado, I would have been skeptical that the wind would have been strong enough to drive the straw into the tree, which I'm not quite sure is plausible anyway, but at least we're in the right ballpark. On the other hand, had we calculated speeds of F9 or F10 tornado, for one thing, that's not a very realistic since most uh, maximum strength tor tornadoes that we hear about in the news are up to F5. So between checking our units, verifying the work energy theorem with our answer, and seeing where our answer falls in the context of the problem, we have confidence that the answer we've come up with is the correct one.